Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to configure uh, PPP with PAP on these two routers uh, on the serial interface links in between these two routers. I'm using Packet Tracer, and this is the type of configuration that you're going to need to know how to do, or you're going to need to know what it looks like and how it works for the Cisco CCNA. Now, in this network that I've set up, in between these two routers, we've got the 192.168.50 network, 50.0. Um, this serial interface is 192.168.50.1. This one is 192.168.50.2. Okay. Right now we've got green lights on them, and they're working because they're exchanging HDLC frames. Um, but we're going to convert it to the encapsulation on the interfaces, uh, the framing to PPP. Um, this network over here is the 10 network. The host is 10.100. The router's 10.0.0.1. And over here we've got uh, the 172.16 network, the host is 100, and the router is 1, 172.16.0.1. Now everything is, uh, everybody can communicate, we can ping across the network because we've got static routes. We have static route on this router, and we've got a static route on this router over here, so that they can reach each other. Okay, but we're going to see the network go down as we change these serial interfaces, and we configure it. Uh, we configure PPP with PAP. Okay, so uh, we'll start off by going to this router. And the first thing we're going to need to do is get to global um, global config mode. Okay, so we've got a global config mode. And what's going to happen is with PPP, the routers are going to authenticate with each other. And when they do that, they need a username and password that will authenticate across the network. So I'm in router 1 right now. I need to make a username and password for um, router 2. And so that when router 2 sends its, um, its information across, it can authenticate because router 1 already has its username and password set, um, set in it. So I'm going to say username okay r2 password cisco all right and that's done okay and now i'm going to go into the interface serial 2 slash 0 and i'm going to say encapsulation the ip address is already configured on the interface so all i need to do is change the encapsulation from hdlc to ppp so i'm going to say encapsulation ppp and instantly you'll see that the interface goes down, right? And you see that message right there showing that the interface went down. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll say, okay, PPP authentication, and then I'm gonna put a question mark to see what my choices are. Question mark, and you can see I have two choices, CHAP or PAP. So I'm gonna put this time PAP. So then PAP, all right. So we've got uh, PAP authentication, and now I'm going to say PPP and then question mark. And I'm going to say PAP, right? So the next one is PAP. And then I'll put another question mark. And you can see that the next configuration that we're going to have to set is sent username. And so I'm going to put in sent dash username. And the username that we're going to send across the serial link will be our own username, R1. And then the password will be Cisco. Okay, and I think that's all we need for this router. So we'll close that. Okay, and we'll open up this router. And for this router, we're going to need to do the same thing. So I'm going to say conf t, which is short for configure terminal. I'm going to say username, the other router's username, r1, password. Cisco. Okay, now we've got a username for the R1 router, so it'll be able to authenticate into this router. And then, uh, so now we'll go into the interface, serial 2 slash 0. We'll set the encapsulation to PPP. Okay, then we'll say the PPP authentication tab completion will be PAP. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say PPP, question mark, PAP, SE, tab, sent username. 
will be this router is going to send the username R2 with a password of Cisco also. All right, and now that should be good. So now that notice, let's see here. Let's see if we get a message. The interface line protocol and interface serial 2 slash 0 change state up. So everything should work now. So now I should be able to go into this PC, go to the desktop, go to the command prompt, and try to ping across the network to the other host. And let's see if it works. I'm trying to ping across the network, right? Okay, we got a timeout, but then we getting re we're getting replies. So um, they learned about each other through ARP requests, and now it's working.